Hey everybody, Aaron Zamso from FireRescueFitness.com. Gang, I'm here today to give you a workout that you can do from the confines of your own home. Uh, if you are at a firehouse, maybe you're a dispatcher and you don't get a lot of time, you might have a little room or a little area where you can do working out or workouts. This particular workout doesn't require a lot of equipment, doesn't require a lot of time. It's very versatile uh, and it can be adapted to meet any level of fitness. It does require, however, that you do have a set of weights. It doesn't matter what, what uh, weight level, if it's a five pound, some five pound dumbbells, a kettlebell, a plate weight. Personally, I like to do this workout with a set of 25 pound dumbbells or a 25 or 45 pound plate. I know a lot of us have some fitness equipment at home, some fitness equipment at the firehouse, and this workout's perfect for that minimal equipment. Now this workout, and, and along with uh, another body weight workout that I did is part of our Get FRF in 40 Days at Home Workout Program. There's a link down below. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, it's in the, embedded in the comments or the notes section where you click that link and you can get the entire download of this workout and the other workouts along with some nutritional advice. And all this is brought about because right now we are all scrambling for ways to stay fit. We don't have access to our gyms. We don't uh, necessarily have access to, uh, you know, firehouses where we would normally work out. A lot of things are changing. And one thing that is not changing is how essential our health, our fitness is, especially as first responders. We need to stay on top of our health. We need to continually make progress in our fitness because right now is when our communities are counting on us. So this workout is for you guys. It is one that will help you improve performance, burn some fat, help you feel better and move better. So let's get into it. Like any FRF workout program, I like to make sure we focus on mobility, core strength, overall body, full body strength, and cardiovascular recovery and VO2 uh, recovery and your energy um, system, your ener energy development systems. We set our workouts up into different categories and we go right from one to the next to the next. They're fast paced, which makes them more efficient. And I think it also simulates a lot of the, th the stuff that we do on the fire ground. We're going to start this workout with active movements. And these are exercises that improve mobility, get your heart rate going, and will help you move better uh, in life and on the fire ground. Today's workout starts with a step back, reach, and twist. You're going to just stand from an upright position, drive your, one of your legs back, and twist away from it to stretch out your hips, stretch out your lats. You'll feel it a little bit, hopefully in your back glutes. Um, and this is to stretch out the hips and back again. You're going to step back, reach. The further you step back, the higher you reach, the more you feel that. From, from rep to rep, you want to try to drive that leg back a little bit further. You're going to do six reps each side, alternating sides. With the active movements, you hold these movements for two or three seconds and then alternate to the other side. i got three of them to do. We're going to do six reps a side. The first one is step back, reach, and twist. The second one is Spider-Man's. You're going to be in a push-up position. This is my favorite exercise, by the way, mobility exercise. You're going to step towards the outside of your hand for two or three seconds and then come back to that push-up position. You alternate from leg to leg. And this is going to improve uh, mobility in your hips, your glutes. It also works a little bit of shoulder stability because you got to hold that push-up position. Finally, you're going to do thoracic rotations where you're down on all fours from the quadruped position. You bring your hand on top of your head, or you can even just reach your, your hand up towards the ceiling. But you're going to reach up towards the ceiling with your elbow, your hand, and then back through underneath your body. This is going to warm up your upper back and lower back. You might feel it in your hips and glutes a little bit. You're going to do six reps each side on that. Now, you've done those three exercises. What I want you to do is go back and repeat that. Six reps each side, step back, reach, and twist. Six reps of the Spider-Man's and six reps of the thoracic rotations. After you complete your second circuit of that, you're going to move to some core exercises. Here again, we're going to do three exercises in a circuit. We're going to do dead bugs, which is a great exercise. I, I like to feel that I feel this one all the way through my legs, all the way up to my shoulders. It's great for total body and total core. Uh, I call it functional core uh, work, where you lay on your back, your arms and legs are up towards the ceiling. You're going to slowly lower one leg and the opposite arm towards the ground. Pause and then bring them back up. Alternate side to side. You're going to do six reps each side in a slow, controlled manner. After you do those six on each side, you're going to do glute bridges. Great exercise for 
the hips, for the glutes, the hamstrings. Um, this also ho hopefully will help stretch out your hips a little bit. You lay on your back with your feet uh, planted firm into the ground. You're going to push your hips straight up towards the ceiling. Pause for a second. Make sure you squeeze your abs, squeeze your glutes, and then lower your, your hips back down slowly. 12 to 15 reps of that. If you're more advanced, you can even try them with one leg, single leg, six to eight reps each leg. But after the glute bridges, you're gonna to move to what I call prone wise. This is a great exercise for those postural muscles, those shoulders, which uh, as first responders, we have a tendency to injure as EMTs and medics and firefighters. We are usually hurting those shoulders, backs and knees. So all three of these, if you can tell now, address those issues of the core or those muscle groups of the core. So the prone wise, you're gonna lay down on your stomach, your arms straight up overhead, thumbs towards your ceiling, and you're gonna raise those thumbs up as high as you can. You can also raise your feet up to get a little glute and low back and uh, hamstring uh, integration into it. But you're gonna do this anywhere from 10 to 15 reps based on your level of fitness. Same uh, as goes with the active movements. After you do those three, you're gonna go back and repeat that circuit one more time with those reps. After you complete the core circuit, you should be warmed up. You should be about anywhere from eight to 10 minutes into this workout, feeling pretty good, feeling more mobile, getting that core activated. Now we're gonna to move to the strength circuit. We have nine exercises we're gonna do. One of the things that you need again are a set of dumbbells. Doesn't, re doesn't matter what weight you have them. The lighter you go, maybe the longer you'll go on the circuit, the heavier, the shorter. And it also depends on your level of fit. So if you're just beginning this, the lighter the better, just to go through the motions, get that blood flowing, get those muscles activated. You're also gonna need an interval timer. Uh, you, can all, you can use a clock or a stopwatch, but I like interval timers, they're free, there's apps everywhere. Personally, I use the HIIT interval timer with the Android phones. I know that iPhone um, uh, platform also has one. What you're gonna do is set your intervals for 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. You wanna do nine exercises, and if you're gonna repeat it, you're gonna do 18. If you're gonna do three rounds, you do 27. For all intents and purposes, what I like to do when I do this, I use 25 pound uh, dumbbells. I go 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. If you have lighter dumbbells, you might wanna go 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest, and if it's heavier, 20, 40. And then you can play around with it a little bit. So let's get into these exercises. We're gonna circuit them. We're gonna go right from one to the next to the next and then repeat it uh, if, if you are, are willing and if you are, feel like you, you wanna challenge, really challenge yourself. So first exercise, you're gonna take dumbbells. Now, if you have a plate weight, you can also hold it here. A kettlebell, you can do it here. You're gonna do front squats. Uh, this is a great exercise to build the quads, the, the muscles of the upper back and core. You wanna hold those weights up about shoulder high. Go down as low as you can. This particular movement, you want to make sure you stay controlled. And as you get more uh, blood flow into those legs, you might find that your range of motion increases a little bit. Stay controlled. Do as many reps as you can in that time frame. For me, I like to do as many as I can in 30 seconds. Stay under control. After you do the front squats, you're going to move to bent over rows. This is a great exercise for the back. Actually, you'll feel it in the lower back and hamstrings. Uh, especially if you're doing it properly. Now the key to this movement is you're going to move forward, you're going to bend forward at the waist, let your arms drag down towards the floor, and then pull those weights up towards your chest. The key here is you want to keep your chest up, or chest out, head up. Good posture alignment, no rounding of the back. And if you're doing this right, you'll feel that in the low back, you'll feel it a little bit in the hamstrings. You want to do these body rows under control, I'm sorry, these dumbbell rows under control, as many as you can, in that 30 second time period. After you do the bent over rows, you're gonna do an exercise called a chest crusher. This is a great one to uh, really, really develop the chest. You're gonna chest, you're gonna feel it in the triceps. You lay on the ground, put the dumbbells up straight towards the ceiling and you're gonna drive them together and squeeze them together. Slowly lower those down towards your chest. Now, if you're doing this from the floor, your elbows might hit the floor before the dumbbells hit the chest but you wanna drive them, push them together, and then drive them straight up towards the ceiling. You'll feel this throughout the entire chest, you'll feel that triceps, stay controlled. Do this for 30 seconds. Then you're gonna stand up. I like to do the next exercise, which is alternating bicep curls in a little bit of a squat position. So you're still gonna get a little quad, 
You also want to work the muscles of the, of the upper back and your posture muscles by keeping your head back and your chest back and your shoulder blades down. So good, good posture. Slowly go from one side to the next, alternating arms. You can do a curl position. Uh, you can also do uh, a different grip with it. Depends on your level of fitness. It depends on where you're feeling it. Depends on your weight. Personally, I'll do one set with my thumbs forward hammer position and then I'll, I'll uh, supinate the grip out my thumbs out and alternate from side to side the second circuit through. Alternating arm curls, 30 seconds, as many as you can. Next exercise then, uh, you're gonna do shoulder presses. Uh, instead of doing both at the same time, we're gonna alternate from one side to the next. You can hold them in a, uh, in a forward position, you can hold them on your sides. It just depends on what's comfortable for you, but you wanna be in a ready stance, I like to call ready stance or a good postural stance. Slight bend in the knees, head and shoulders back, abs braced, press one up, and as the other, as that one arm is coming down, you're gonna press up with the other. Alternate side to side, all right? We're almost through this game, we've got four more to do. After you do those shoulder presses, you're gonna drop the weights down to your side, and you're gonna do step back lunges, alternate from one side to the next. If you're just beginning, you may want to drop the weight altogether and not do this under a resistance. Just do regular body weight. It just depends on your level of fitness. You can hold it uh, a weight in one arm if you want, but just make sure you switch from circuit to circuit or halfway through. So 15 seconds with one weight in one arm, 15 seconds uh, when you go in the, with the weight in the other arm. After step back lunges, you're going to do tricep overhead extensions. If you have a plate weight, this is where I like to use this. Uh, it, it really is more comfortable on the shoulders if you have a plate weight like um, uh, like I, I'm very fortunate to have a 45 with, with some handles in it. You, you have that, that weight up overhead, you drive it up overhead, slowly lower it down behind your head, and then extend it. The key to this one too, uh, as it is with all these other exercises, head position, postural position, shoulders back, and make sure that your head is in a good position uh, with this. So you're going to do those overhead tricep extensions. And then you're going to go back to a dumbbell. You can do this with a kettlebell as well. You can do this with a, a plate weight. Uh, but you're going to grab one of those objects, one of those weighted objects, and do what's called a dumbbell swing. So the, the weight goes between your legs. You tuck it kind of back behind. And I like to say that's a cocked position. And then you drive your hips through and that weight up to shoulder height, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, and it really works the muscles of the po posterior chain. And then come back down, control it, Come that weight back down and repeat. If you're staggering your hands where your one hand's on top of the other, you may want to alternate them. So right hand on top on one rep, the next rep, your left hand is on top. Those are the dumbbell swings. You feel this in the hamstring, you feel this in the low back. It might even get your heart rate going a little bit. And then finally, you're going to finish with dumbbell halos. Or again, you can use a plate weight or a kettlebell. You start with that weight in front of your head and you circle the weight around your head back to the front. Now, notice I said the weight circles around your head. Your head doesn't circle around the weight. You want to go clockwise direction and then back counterclockwise each rep. Alternate the direction each rep. The key here is bring the weight around your head, not your head around the weight. I like to use a little bit of a squat stance on this too to make sure that my lower body stays stable and that my shoulders stay back. You're going to feel this in the triceps, you feel this through the shoulders, you might even feel this through the abs. It's a great exercise to work shoulder mobility and shoulder strength. So that's it. That's the nine exercises gang. Now, if you got through that, you feel like, hey, I'm doing good. This is the first time I'm doing this exercise or this workout. I'm good. I'm going to move to the next part. Great. If you're more advanced, you can do it again. Uh, one or two times for a total of two or three circuits, you know, either 18 or 27 minutes. Remember, regardless of your level of fitness, form is essential. So if you're doing it again, as you fatigue, make sure that you uh, rest if you need to, if your form is going to heck. All right. Now you're done with the strength training part. I then like to do what I call interval overhauls or afterburners. These are great ways to get fire ground based movement patterns into your workout programs. If you're an EMT, if you're a firefighter, uh, if you are a medic, you know, we do a lot of lifts, we do a lot of holds, um, we do a lot of drags, you know, on the fire ground, we do climbing, we do pulls, we do stairs, we do crawls. This is a great time to incorporate those fire ground based movements into your program. Today I actually have one already created. 
It's called the Five Minutes of Hell uh, Challenge. Now, it sounds bad, but uh, it really, really boosts metabolism. It's really going to help your performance. You're going to set an interval timer for 30 seconds, 10 rounds, which is a total of five minutes. We're going to do five exercises. We're going to move right from one exercise to the next, to the next, to the next. No rest. Now, again, if, you, if your form starts to go and you need to take a breather, you certainly can. But the goal is to move from one to the next to the next all the way through for the five minutes. Here's the exercises I want you to do. First one, crawls. We crawl on the fire ground. We do search and rescue. We should crawl during our workouts. So the first exercise is crawling. If you have a room you can crawl around in, great. If you have a two by two set area, just crawl in a square. Do what you can. Crawl side to side, forward to back. You're going to crawl for 30 seconds. Then you're going to get to your feet and you're going to do side to side lunges where you step down towards your toe, towards the left side, come back to the center, go to the right side, reach down towards your toe. Alternate side to side for 30 seconds. If you're beginning, you can just reach your knee. If you're more advanced, try to reach those toes. Side to side lunges, side to side shuffles, uh, whichever you prefer. Then you're going to hit the floor and do mountain climbers where you're in a push up position. You drive your knee up towards your chest and then you alternate. Alternate side to side for 30 seconds. Again, if you need to rest, you can, but try to, to go that entire 30 seconds, and then you're going to move to burpees. Pause for the awe. Yes, burpees. Right now, your heart rate's going, uh, and uh, you're tired and you're fatigued. This is a great time to challenge your whole energy development system with this exercise. For me personally, I don't do the, uh, I don't do the push-up when I do the burpee. I'll go down, drive my hips and my, my feet back, bring them up forward, and then add a little jump. I don't do the push because I do. we did a lot of pushing throughout the strength training part, so I, I feel like uh, here with the burpee, I, I want to focus more on the jump, the jumping and the power and movement in my legs. You can also do an up-down. Just hit the floor, get go down to the floor, and stand back up. Depends on your level of fitness. You're going to do that for 30 seconds, and then finally, your last one, you're going to hold a squat position. If you've ever been on a car accident scene, or on the fire ground, we hold a lot of squatting patterns. We hold, uh, you know, that, that change in elevation. So you're going to do that here. Hold the squat. This is also a great time where you can work on your recovery, get that heart rate back down, because you know what? After you hold for 30 seconds, you're going to go back and do it again for the second circuit or second round, right? Go back and do your crawls, side to sides, climbers, burpees, and then hold. And then you're done. You should be gassed at this point, but feeling good. Uh, and then I recommend, and if you download our Get FRF in 40 Day program, you'll see that there is a four minute stretch uh, program that follows this workout. If you don't have access to, to that program yet, you can just do a couple of stretches and bring the heart rate down and work on your recovery. And that's it, gang. If you made it this far, great job. Again, you can get a PDF, you can get the entire workout, you can get that along with some other bodyweight workouts by clicking the link down below. I know right now we're starting to get to a point you're probably a little anxious, but don't let your fitness um, down. Don't let, let your, your crew down. Don't let your community down. Now's the time you need to focus. This is a great workout that you can do a couple times a week. You can integrate in the other bodyweight exercise sizes that we have in this program. You can look at some of my other videos. And if you have any question whatsoever, if you need me to develop anything for you, I'm here for you. Uh, my intention here is to give you everything you need during this time so that we can uh, effectively serve our community. So stay safe, everybody. If you have questions, let me know how I can help. Stay safe, stay healthy, and get FRF.